In this lesson, we're continuing working with functions, specifically with function rules. We'll be writing function rules and finding out how to test those rules for different values. Uh, so we've got use words and symbols to describe the value of each term as a function of its position. Then find the value of the 12th term in the sequence. So what it's saying is, is basically we're looking at the position and we're saying compare the position to what outcome we get. Okay? And so if we look in example one, we see, all right, well, the sixth number, right, in this function, we would have the answer of two. If we had the eighth number in the position, we would get the value of four. So if I were to answer this, I, I might say, well, based on its position, they're always taking away four, right? So based on its position, they're always taking away four. So how would I write that? Well, if n, they've already actually defined any number in that position, we, we say for any n, that, that represents what position you're in, you could pick any position, okay? You're always taking away four. So this is the function rule we would write. So any number or any position that we have, you take away four, right? We see that's true. Six minus four is two, right? Seven minus four is three. Eight minus four is four, right? So we see that, that that's going to work. Now, how would we write that in words? You might say, for any position, you subtract four, right? So in words, I say for any position, you subtract four, right? Because any position we choose, that's what you're going to do. It's going to be consistent. So here we've used uh, numbers and symbols, right? Here we've used words. Okay, then let's say, well, we need to finish the second part of this problem, then find the value of the 12th term in the sequence. Well, if it's the 12th term, it's saying um, that it's the 12th position, right? So the 12th number in this function, well, it's simply going to be 12 minus 4. And so our answer for that one would be 8, right? So the 12th, when n equals 12, it is going to equal 8. For this next one, we're going to see, okay, well, this one added 4, right? So the position was 1, it added 4. The position was 2, and it added 8. The position was 3, it added 12. So this one, it's not consistent on what it's adding. But you might notice that 1 times 5, right, is 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 5 is 15. So in this one, our expression wouldn't be n plus something or n minus something. This one is going to be 5 times n. So whatever value I pick for the position, I just need to multiply by 5, and that will give me the value of the term. So again, if we're writing out with words, for any position, you multiply by 5. And then if we're testing again for the 12th term, so when n equals 12, it's going to be 5 times 12. 5 times 12 is 60. So the 12th term would equal 60. Now for number 3, this one is the most difficult. Okay, because for these, it's n minus 4, and this one it's 5n. Okay, one thing is being done. Okay, the n is, being, is having 4 taken away from it, or n is being multiplied by 5. For this one, I picked a harder problem so that you could see an example of one where it's starting to get more difficult. Okay, so number 3 says, the table shows the cost of a pizza based on the number of toppings. Write a function rule to find the cost for pizza with x toppings. Okay, 
So first of all, uh, we've already defined a variable. Okay, they've already already defined our variable or our input as x. In the first and second problem, they, they defined our variable as n. This one, they're defining as x. And let's think about if you've ever ordered a pizza or looked in in the coupons that they send. Usually, pizza places will have a base price for a pizza. Right? It might say you're going to pay eight dollars for this pizza plus a dollar for every topping that you get, or plus a dollar and fifty cents for every topping you get. So it's not as simple as just saying like five times x. You're going to have a couple things going on here. And when we get here, well, we can look at, we can say, well, what's happening with 1 to 12? Well, we're adding 11, right? 1 plus 11 is 12. Okay, does that keep working? 2 plus 14. No, that would be 2 plus 12 is 14. It would be 3 plus 13 is 16. So that's not going to work. You can't just add something to it. What if we try the multiplication like we had in problem 2? Well, 1 times 12 is 12. 2 times 12 is 24. So that's not going to work either. right? It's not going to be as simple as all these others. So what I'm going to look for is I'm going to say, well, as each of these increases 1, right? the number of toppings, it's increasing 1. All right? Then as this that increases by 1, this is increasing by 2. Right, so as this increases by 1, this is increasing by 2. Right, as this increases by 1, this is increasing by 2. All right. Hmm. So what I'm going to set up is I'm going to say, well, this is kind of like a multiplication problem, right? Uh, because as I increase right, a value, this is going up consistently. All right, so as I increase by 1, that's going up consistently. So think of an example where if our box said this, input, output, right? If it was 1 and this was 2, right? This was 2 and this was 4. This was 3 and this was 6. Okay? We could write this as uh, 1, right? Or we could write it as 2x because 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. Okay? Right? We wouldn't do the addition because this would be, you know, 1 plus 1 is 2. Uh, 2 plus 1 is 3, so it doesn't work there. But we could write it as a multiplication. But the problem is, hmm, the numbers aren't 2, 4, 6. They're 12, 14, 16, 18. So the 2x is actually part of it. The 2x is part of it. But we need to say, well, 1 times 2 is not 12. It's 2. So what do I need to do to 2x to get it to be the value I need when I test a certain value? So if it's 1, 2 times 1 is 2. What do I have to do to that? I need to add 10. Because 2 times 1 is 2, plus 10 is 12. So we look for this common thing, this common trend. As this is moving up by 1, this is moving up by 2. So that 2 value goes into a multiplication problem with the x. And then whatever we need to do to that expression 2x to make this true, that's what we're going to add, or in some cases you might subtract. So let's test it and see if it is true. So 1 times 2 is 2 plus 10 is 12. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 10 is 14. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 10, that equals 16. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 10 is 18. So we see it's working. Okay, And this kind of actually makes sense if you think about the pizza example. Because a pizza place, this is basically saying they're charging $10 for a cheese pizza, a standard pizza, okay? It's charging $10 for any pizza you get, but you're also gonna have to pay $2 per topping. So you're paying $10 for the pizza, and then for every topping you get, you're paying $2. So it kind of makes sense, and that's what we talked about when we broke down this problem at the beginning.
So there you have it, some examples of problems you'll work with when working with function rules.